Welcome to this continuation on chapter one's coverage of molecules and numbers. In this video, I will teach you how to do dimensional analysis, which is also called unit conversion, or sometimes unit analysis, or dimensionally, unitally, conversionally analysis, analysis. Anyway, here it goes. So whenever you have to convert one set of units into another, for example, how many feet are there in one kilometer? I recommend doing the following steps. One, write down the value that you want to convert. Now, for any given problem, this is usually the value that has no units in its denominator. Two, draw a set of parentheses to the right of that value with a horizontal line in the middle of that set of parentheses. And three, write units. Don't write any numbers that relate directly to each other above and below that horizontal line, which will cancel out the units that you started with and leave behind the units that you want to arrive at or convert to. I call those your destination units. Multiple sets of parentheses may be necessary. In other words, as you lay this all out, focus on units first. Units, 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 not numbers, okay? Once you've done that, we go to step four. Inside your parentheses that you wrote down, now that you've got all your units in place, insert numbers that complement the units in each parenthetic location. While doing this, be sure that each set of parentheses with numbers and units conveys a true statement. Five is multiply the numbers out using your calculator. This should cancel out the unit that you started with and arrive at your destination unit or units, complete with the correct numerical answer. And six, round your answer to the correct number of significant figures as described in our preceding video in which I taught you the significant figure rules. Got it? Okay, I realize at this stage you might look at this and think, okay, Mike, that was a lot of gobbledygook. I have no idea what all of that means. Okay, rest assured that I will have a bunch of videos where I work out problems, link to in the description below, and show you how to do this, starting with this set of problems, okay? I want you to try doing these on your own first. Pause the video right now and try to work these out using the steps that I just outlined. Once you've done that, then hit play, and I'll show you how to do all of them using my unit conversion dimensional analysis steps I just listed on the board. So this question asks us how many seconds there are in one day. In my dimensional analysis slash unit conversion process, step one is write down the value that you want to convert. So the value that it gives us is one day. So I'm just gonna write down one day. What do I want to convert that one day into for this question? Well, I eventually want to convert it into seconds, which is abbreviated in SI unit land as SEC or sometimes just the letter S. So I want to take one day and eventually get into seconds. So that's step one, write down what you want to convert. Step two is draw a set of parentheses to the right of this value with a horizontal line in the middle of it. Now we're done with step two. Step three is write down units within the set of parentheses you just drew. Focusing on units, no numbers yet, that will cancel out the units that you start with and eventually get you to the destination units, the units you're trying to get to, in this case, seconds. So here's sort of the pattern I always see. The units that are gonna be in the denominator here almost always, not always, but almost always, are gonna be the same as the units in the numerator of the previous term, because I want them to cancel each other out. In other words, I have one day here, so the units in the denominator here is also going to be day, because I want the days to cancel each other out. You see that? Now, is there some other value that we know of that I can relate directly to a day? Like how many somethings are there in a day? Now, if you happen to know off the top of your head how many seconds there are in a day, you could just put seconds up here and then we could throw in numbers. But I don't really know that. But the one thing that I do know is how many hours there are in a day. So I could put hours up here, right? Hours in a day. So in other words, anytime I write down a value on the bottom or a unit on the bottom and a unit on the top, I always ask myself, are those two units directly relatable to each other? Is it possible to relate hours to days? Yes, it is. You can directly uh, do that. So you need to keep that in mind anytime you lay down units because you don't want to lay down two units that have nothing to do with each other, like liters to miles. How many miles are there in a liter? Yeah, that's, that's not a thing. You can't really do that. Does that make sense? So make sure you put units within each parenthesis that directly relate to each other, okay? So we're not quite done with step three yet because we do uh, cancel out days here. And again, I just focus on units. I ignore numbers until the very, very end or toward the end, okay? But I haven't gotten to seconds. See, if I cancel my two days based on the units I've laid down here, I have hours. That isn't seconds. So what do I do? 
I laid out another set of parentheses. And what units are gonna be in the denominator here? Yeah, you saw the pattern. The units in the denominator here are almost always the same as the units in the numerator of the previous term. So if I have hours up top, I'm going to put hours down here. Makes sense? Because that way they'll cancel each other out. Now, what thing can I relate hours directly to? Well, if you know how many seconds there are in an hour, you could do that. But let's say you don't know that. What's another kind of time unit that we can relate to hours? Yeah, minutes. Minutes. I know how many minutes there are in an hour, so I can just put minutes, and I'll abbreviate that as M-I-N, minutes. So that way I'll cancel out hours. Now my destination units that I erase there is seconds. So whatever my final answer is, I want to have be seconds, right? So am I to seconds yet? No, I'm not. So what do I do? I lay down another set of parentheses. And what units are going to be in the denominator here? Yeah, you saw the pattern. They're going to be the same as the units in the numerator of the previous term, minutes. So I'll put minutes down here, OK? Now, is it possible to directly relate seconds to minutes? Do you know how to do that? How many seconds there are in a minute? Yeah, it is. So we'll put seconds up top. Now you'll notice that the minutes here cancel out the minutes up top. So unit-wise, I have gotten from day all the way to seconds. That is step three. It's focusing on units. Units, 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 units. Make sense? Now you notice I haven't inserted any numbers anywhere, right? The reason is because I don't do that till after I've got all my units in the proper locations, making sure that every set of units I put within each parenthesis set are units that relate directly to each other. I don't attach liters to miles because they don't directly relate. But seconds to minutes, no problem. Minutes to hours, no problem. Minute, hour or hours to days, no problem. That all makes sense. Now I go on to step four, which is insert numbers in their proper locations. And every time we insert a number, we always step back and ask ourselves, did I put the number in the correct location? So for example, in one day down there, how many hours are there? 24. Now the reason I uh, say this, make sure anytime you lay down numbers, you step back and ask yourself that I put the numbers in the proper location because it's very easy if you're doing it too quickly to put them in the wrong location. If you put one on the top and 24 on the bottom, you'd be wrong because there are not one hour in 24 days. Do you see what I'm saying? So you put the numbers down and step back and ask yourself that I put them in the right place. Are there 24 hours in one day? Yes, there are. So I can go on. How many minutes are there in an hour? Yeah, there's 60. Okay, so I put those down and then I ask myself, did I put them in the right place? Are there 60 minutes in an hour? Because again, it's easy to flip them and put the one on top and the 60 on bottom. Are there 60 hours in one minute? No, makes sense? Now I'll just continue here. In one minute, how many seconds are there? There are 60. So those are my numbers and I'm now done with step four. Step five is multiply them all out on your calculator. When I multiply this all out, 24 times one is 24 times 60 times 60, I end up getting 86,000 400. So that's how many seconds there are in one day. So we are now done with step five. Step six is to make sure to round our final answer to have the correct number of significant figures as explained in our earlier sig fig rules video. Link to in the description below. Now this is a multiplication, right? We've multiplied a bunch of things, so we follow the multiplication sig fig rule, which is that we have to round our final answer to have the same number of significant figures as whichever term had the fewest number of significant figures. I know, I realize that as you look at all this, you might look at the ones down here and think one, that only has one significant figure. As I explained in an earlier sig fig rule video, linked to in the description below, terms or values that are definitional have infinite significant figures, which is kind of something that gets a little bit trippy and, and messed up a little bit. Now, if you're trying to look at solar calendars and things to define uh, one day is having exactly 24 hours. You might argue that technically it doesn't. There's you know leap hours and leap minutes based on the solar rotation of the Earth. So it gets really, really technical and complicated. So I'm going to kind of ignore that. I'm going to consider these as just being rule definitions that there is exactly 60 seconds in exactly one minute, although you might argue with me on that. And same thing for minutes and hours because that's sort of a definitional term. But 24 hours in one day, could I say that there's the same thing as 24 hours in 1.0 days, which is still one day, but I've just added a zero. I think so. I think so. So what I'm going to kind of go, I realize it's being a little bit technical, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to consider this, the smallest number of significant figures on the board as being two, okay? I'm looking at the 24 because I could put a, a zero right there and the definition would still be the same. 1.0 days still has 24 hours. Or I could say 1.00 days, which has three significant figures because there's zeros to the right of a decimal, uh, which would still make the 24 number there be our limiting significant figure term. Does that make sense? In any event, I'm going to round this to have two significant figures for our significant figure rules, which here would round up to 86,000. And you could leave it as 86,000, I suppose, because these zeros don't count as being significant. Or if you wanted, you could rewrite that in scientific notation, which is 8.6 times 10 
to the fourth. So scientific notation. You can see looking at that, that has two sig figs, uh, which this also has two sig figs. And so we've done all six steps of our dimensional analysis. Thanks, everyone, and have an enjoyable rest of your day.